So, this is the second official formal video we are making on the YouTube channel going over this player ever since he was drafted in 2021. The reason we're talking about him again is because I saw a post made on the Ottawa Senators subreddit, spoiler alert, this guy is a Sens prospect, and it goes over his point production so far in 2022-2023, playing for the Ottawa OHL team, the 67s. Now, the reason I find this to be interesting enough to make a video about is because when it comes to this prospect, his entire profile, where he was drafted, and what he's accomplished since the draft, it's been one of the strangest series of events, especially for a guy taken as high as he was in his draft selection spot back in 2021. So without further ado, let's go over and get to talking about Tyler Boucher. As we said, an Ottawa Senators draft pick in 2021 who was taken 10th overall. Now, I kind of have to go out there and introduce this again because not everybody who watches these videos are Ottawa Senators fans, so just in case you need a little bit of a refresher, Tyler Boucher is a big dude. He's 6'1", 205. Okay, maybe he's not that big, but he plays really big. He is a right-wing, left-wing player. He's a right-handed guy born in January of 2003. He's 19 years old, and he was taken 10th. The reason I keep on mentioning his draft slot is because this dude was ranked way further out than anywhere near the top 10. Elite Prospects had him ranked number 45. Future Considerations had him at 93. Craig Button had him at 49. McKean's at 63. McKenzie actually had him pretty high. He was ranked 29th on Bob's list, and he was the 25th North American skater ranked by NHL Central Scouting. So, at the end of the day, this was a guy that if you took him, let's say 50th overall, maybe a bit higher, 35th overall, it wouldn't really be all too surprising. But 10th, though. That was a shock. And we made another video actually on the YouTube channel when Boucher was initially selected and you could see the reactions from everybody in the comments. Oh my goodness, what are the Senators doing? Who is this guy? Why did they take this dude? Back with the NTDP when he was drafted, Tyler Boucher was not one of the top guys on the team in points. Sure, he was a point per game, but he wasn't available for the majority of the season, and as a result, he had guys like Isaac Howard and Frank Nazer and Dylan Duke, who all had much more points. Now, with Tyler Boucher, points aside, there was a pretty physical element to his game as well, which had a lot of scouts going out there and saying, okay, if there's a reason why Ottawa is taking him 10th, it's because of that physicality. It's because of his willingness to try to get under the opponent's skin. You know that Ottawa values players who play in that sort of mold. You have Brady Kachuk literally as your captain, so having more players that kind of fit that bill, it makes sense that they would go out there and prioritize those types of talents. It's just promoting a guy that some people said could have been a 90th overall pick up to 10th might be a little bit far-fetched, but hey, let's go over to Boston College in 21, 22, and see where he goes from there. Spoiler alert, he wasn't doing all too great. He had three points in 17 games played in the very limited BU sample that he had, and it was so bad that he actually decommitted from Boston University and went over to the OHL for the 67s. Now, this forfeits all future college eligibility because... The OHL is part of the CHL, which is Major Junior, wherein the players can be signed by their NHL teams while playing there, which is why the NCAA considers it a pro league. Long story short, he's not going back to the NCAA ever because he's not allowed to. In the sample that he had with the Ottawa 67s, he had 14 points in 24 games played, which if you're doing the math here, I mean, Tyler Boucher was supposed to be a big physical dude who was in his draft plus one year and he was a top 10 pick and he went out there in the OHL scoring at roughly half a point a game. That's not great. Now, you go over to what he's doing this season, and he's actually been a lot better in the six-game sample that he has. He's got seven points. And, I mean, it's not bad. Definitely not bad. Over a point per game, he is dominating the score sheet with five goals and two assists, and you can actually see that when it comes to the goals that he is scoring, he is getting set up pretty well, and he's making it count. Whenever he has the puck in his stick, he's firing it towards the goal, he's getting long-range goals. There was one goal that he scored where Canadian's prospect Vincent Rohrer went out there and threw the puck off the end boards, it bounced out in front, and Boucher was the first guy to get it, come in, shoot, and score. He's had some pretty good highlights, and he's had some pretty nasty hits, too. There was one play that I saw after a whistle where Tyler Boucher kind of 
takes the guy down while he's not noticing, and I know you could say that's kind of slimy, and I definitely won't disagree with you, but then again, those are the kinds of intangibles that the Ottawa 67s have in this guy, and it's why the Ottawa Senators decided to take him 10th overall, too. It's just, at the same time, being just barely, very slightly over a point per game in your draft plus two season after being a 10th overall pick... I'm sorry, man, but so far, Tyler Boucher has not done enough, in my eyes at least, to say that he is definitively a 10th overall caliber guy. Now, I'm not going to go out there and blame him. It's not his fault that the Ottawa Senators decided to take him way further back than when he was supposed to be drafted. I mean, he could have gone a lot later. But if you acknowledge just what the Senators were thinking when they made this pick, it becomes a lot more difficult to try to rationalize it and say, darn it, man. The intangibles, the physical play, it's so gosh darn valuable that they've got to take him 10th overall. There's no waiting until your next pick to try to pick this guy up if you really, really want him. Because, hey, take a look at the guys taken after Tyler Boucher in the draft. Cole Sillinger was the very next pick, and he made the Blue Jackets right away. You've got Coronado, who was dominating the NCAA, Brennan Othman, Bull Duke, a lot of other players whose names I feel a lot more comfortable in labeling as a top 20 talent than... Tyler Boucher, it's kind of weird just looking at the drop-off in talent. William Eklund, Brant Clark, Dylan Genther, and then Tyler Boucher. One of these things is not like the others, unfortunately, when it comes to long-term potential ceiling. And so, if Tyler Boucher is really going to show off sometime in the next few years that he is a 10th overall caliber guy in this draft class, better than Coronado, better than Sillinger, better than all these guys, he's going to really need to, like get a kick up in that point production. I know he's been improving. He definitely has gotten a lot more points this season compared to last if you go by points per game. But still, draft plus two year, 19 years old, top 10 pick. There's a reason why for a lot of Senators fans that I've seen, it doesn't appear to be that Tyler Boucher has the highest ceiling in the world. Oh, he's a 10th overall guy. He could be a first line caliber player sometime down the line. I've been scrolling around on the Sen subreddit, especially where I saw that post, and some of the comments just go out there and say the same thing. He looked decent in the preseason, and I don't think he'll ever be as good as some of the guys picked after him, but I think he can be a player for us someday, and while you'd hope to get more than just a guy at 10th overall, it's certainly better than nothing. Picking him above Cole Sillinger will always sting, but if he can become a full-time bottom 6 NHL guy eventually, then I'm happy with that at this point. And just to end off this video, I think one of the first comments kind of summarizes it nicely. It's not too shabby, his seven points in six games, but to be fair, he doesn't even lead the 67s in points, which you'd kind of hope for in a 19-year-old drafted early in the first round. Now, he did miss the first two games of the season due to Sen's training camp, so it's a lot to expect for him to be already pacing the team in scoring, but sure. It isn't, Chronic Buds replies. Most first-rounders this year will hit point-per-game seasons. Boucher is a man amongst kids, and he's only putting up just above a point per game. Kastelik in his 19-year-old season scored like 50 goals and had almost 80 points in 65 games, and then went on to be drafted in the fifth round. So, at the end of the day, we're still kind of saying the same thing about Tyler Boucher. He was definitely taken way too high, and the season he's having so far in the OHL isn't really looking like it's going to disprove any of that sentiment. But at the same time, it's not really his fault that he was taken so high, and all the Sens have to do now is just hope that they get a player, at the very least, that becomes a worthwhile NHL-caliber guy. Does that happen sometime down the line? I'm not sure. But you can let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Boucher and his overall progression. If you've been watching any 67's hockey, then hey, what are your opinions on how he's played so far? He's definitely been good. It's just, is he good enough to the point where you could say, yeah, no, that's a 10th overall caliber guy right there that we're watching. I don't think anybody's going to say that, but at the same time, improvement is nice. Isn't it? So, tell me in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this Vrishraj Trolls 99. And, bye.